I would say unique for me as as a as a small micro school as well as a an Acton is I do I do serve about twenty five percent of my population is neurodiverse, mm-hmm. so they're children with autism, and that goes back to my pedagogy, my belief system, which is that. Children need to be around all children, not just some children. Mm -hmm. And we do a disservice to um, both sides if we do not bring them together to live and exist together. Because the reality is in the world, one in seven children are diagnosed with some neurodiverse ability. And so if children are not learning how to work alongside help, Both sides, you know, both sides help each other uh, develop empathy for somebody having a hard time, both sides again, then it, what was the world going to look like? Mm. And so I look at, at division and how do you kind of eliminate that division and it's bringing them, bringing children together who are diverse. Mm -hmm. And so again, I think we're robbing children on both sides of this. If we are not bringing them together, if we are, if they're excluded to their own classroom because they might be loud at different times, like it just never made sense to me because if anything, those children have to learn to co-regulate with their typical peers. And it is a beautiful thing when it happens. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is, I have such amazing stories of things that have happened on all sides of this, how they've just they regulate their emotions together Mm -hmm. and they look to their peer, you know, it's just, it's such a beautiful thing. And then we look at how our learners go out into the world and they approach and show an amount of character empathy that other kids on the playground Mm -hmm. at a park might not have. They won't be inclusionary, Mm -hmm. but you can guarantee that our learners will. Mm -hmm. And they'll recognize it. They'll say, come play with me. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Yeah. And so, you know, that's the kind of world I would like to be in. I'm certainly not Pollyanna, you know, I don't, right, right. I don't think that everything is roses, but that certainly is a world I want to, I want to live in more mm-hmm. is to see people include one another and not cast them to the side. Does, so typically uh, the impression of what we're now, what is now called neurodiverse children or an autism in particular is uh, typically assumed to have low social skills. Mm-hmm. I know it's inconsistent. It's you know it's a stereotype, but is that you know, in your kind of context? Mm-hmm. Is is that is like is the neurodiversity a particular challenge in this autonomous environment, or is it, or or is it even an issue? I mean. It really isn't an issue because they listen to their, like a child who's neurodiverse will listen to their peer more than they ever will an adult. Mm -hmm. They're learning, actually. People think that they're not social because they're not immediately seeking it out like you might see, (laughs) you know, but it doesn't mean they're not seeking it out. They are. They're just doing it in their own way. Mm -hmm. They still want connection to somebody else, to another human. They do. I don't have anybody that wants to be all by themselves. You know, they want to seek somebody out the way they do it might look differently. Mm -hmm. And so that's a discussion we might have with somebody that they really like hanging out or hanging around. And that child then begins to develop this relationship where they're able to share. Now, all of a sudden we've got this peer modeling happening, which is like, Hey, you know, we don't, you know, we keep our belly covered, you know, we wash our hands after we go to the bathroom because that's what my friends are doing. Mm -hmm. So it creates this peer modeling that doesn't happen when you're only around children um, who are just like you, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. if you're around someone just like you, you're going to copy what they do. And if they're not doing those things, then you're missing out. Mm -hmm. And so we want them to do these things without being prompted. And so when you follow the lead of your peer, That is something that creates that it creates more of a long term habit inside of of them. So they're able to begin to advocate for themselves or to follow directions because their peers saying, hey, it's lunchtime. Let's go wash our hands first. Mm -hmm. And they just follow them and wash their hands and then come back. And so it it becomes this symbiotic relationship, which really is what children specifically, you know, children with autism 
especially children with Down syndrome, it's what they seek out. Right. You know, they really do want that symbiotic relationship with somebody. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And it's such a disservice not to give it to yeah. them. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Berg.